Hey guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Rab. So if you're a teenager, I'm sure you've heard it before. The save your money, save your money. Oh, make sure you're saving your money. Are you saving your money? Yeah, everyone tells you to save your money. And I'm sure you know that saving your money is a good thing. And in this video, I wanna help you save your money. So I'm gonna go over seven different kind of tips and tricks that I have that will allow you to save money as a teenager, but do it in a kind of the best practice way, a way that will allow you to save a lot of money and save it quickly. So these are seven different ways that will allow you to save a lot of money as a teenager. They're in no particular order. So let's get into it and let's start adding a little bit more money to your bank account. Let's get into it. The first way is fight. Don't go and fight someone, but fight the temptation to buy. Because remember, it's almost like a game. It is almost like this battle. Companies are spending billions upon billions upon billions of dollars to try to convince you to buy something. You know, There are so many MBA students working with a particular company. There are so many marketing managers working for them. And their whole goal, they sit around in a meeting all day trying to figure out how they can get you to want something, how they can get you to buy something. So you want to mentor note just have to know that and have to be able to fight the temptation have to fight those ads and fight the temptation to buy stuff so that's where it all starts you know there isn't really some secret tip or trick it just comes down to the mental know-how of fighting the temptation to always kind of keep up with the Joneses and just buy new things so just fight the temptation to buy Number two is get friends involved. And this is one that I really like. And there's kind of two main ways that I do this. So the first one is just to get friends together that also want to be saving their money. So I have one really good friend of mine. He's also my roommate and he is really good at saving money and he helps me save my money. You know, if I'm going to go buy something, he's just like, Calvin, why would you buy that? You're better off just saving your money. Or he always reminds me of goals that we have later in life about, you know, investing our money into different things like real estate and different things like that. So it's great on that level. And then it's also nice if you can get someone else involved to maybe compete with, you know, make it a competition. How much can we save in this next week? Or how little can we spend on food in this next week? How little can we spend on clothing this month? And make it a game, get your competitive juices flowing so that you can really turn it into a game and have fun with it. That's the cool thing about it. All of a sudden you're turning this saving thing into a game and that's pretty exciting. Number three is get a savings account. Now, I don't want you to get just any savings account. I want to be specific here. I recommend getting a high interest savings account, or also these are known as high APY savings accounts, annual percentage yield. So the reason these differ is if you go to any normal savings account, like a Chase Bank, a Bank of America, or anything like that, you'll get what is called interest. And that's just, if you have money in there, you'll get a little bit of interest, maybe like 0.01% of your money, 0.08% of your money back in interest. However, in the past few kind of years or so, there's been new companies that have come out that have high interest, meaning something along the lines of maybe 1.5 to 2% of interest. And these companies then are, you want to have savings accounts with them because you can make more money on your money. You know, if your money's just sitting at Chase Bank or Bank of America making 0.08%, then it's not making nearly as much as it could making 1.5 to 2% at somewhere, say like Wealthfront or anything else like that. I have mine at wealth front. So you can look into something like that. That's I have a video about the high APY savings accounts that you can look at so you can see which one works best for you. But definitely get a savings account. Then you run the risk of losing it and different things like that. Just put it in a high APY savings account is my advice for you. Number four is take a certain amount of money when you go out. So one way that makes it hard to save is when you go out with your friends, maybe you're going out one evening or going to dinner or something like that, and you end up buying all these little things. Maybe you buy just some little knickknack, you buy dinner, you buy an appetizer, then you go and buy dessert, and it really starts to add up. So how you can kind of fight this and make sure it doesn't happen is you bring out a certain amount when you go out. So say just bring, say, 20 bucks, and say, I'm not going to spend any more than 20 bucks. And I know I'm not going to spend any more than 20 bucks because I'm not going to bring any more than 20 bucks. So that way you can spend it on dinner and then maybe dessert and just keep it under that $20. Because if you have a credit card or even a card with you, you know, it's so easy to spend eh, a little bit more, a little bit more. But if you fix it and say, this much I'm going to spend, then you'll do that because you can't spend any more. You know, it doesn't always have to be cash. You can maybe have like a prepaid debit card or something like that loaded with 20 bucks on there. So that keeps you from spending more than you want because that opportunity isn't even there for you. 
Number five is develop a savings habit. Now, habits are huge. You know, I always talk about how habits are kind of the key to success. And if you are starting as a teenager, then this is something that will give you just such an advantage over other people. So oftentimes when people come to saving, maybe they'll put a little bit when they get a paycheck in or uh, maybe once a year, they'll put an amount into their savings account, but you wanna get in the habit of it. It doesn't even have to be huge. You know, it doesn't have to be this a whole lot of money every single month, it can be something simple. Maybe it's just $5 a week, you know, something small, something just to get in the habit of doing it. You know, $5 a week, $10 a week, maybe a dollar a day or something like that. And then as you start making more money, you up that into maybe trying to get to $300 a month, $400 a month or something like that. Once you start making more money, but just getting in that habit when you're younger to always be saving is something that you really want to get in the habit of doing. You know, what we do and the habits we start when we are teenagers often Oftentimes will follow us throughout the rest of our life. So just getting into a savings habit is a great thing to do. Number six, and this one is, it's okay to not go. And I know sometimes FOMO can get pretty bad, the, the idea of fear of missing out, but sometimes you really have to weigh it if it's worth the financial kind of decision. So for instance, for me, I now live in San Diego and a lot of my friends when I was in high school, I went to high school in San Diego as well, and a lot of them went to Coachella. And Coachella is so expensive. If you don't know what it is, it's a music festival that's held in Coachella Valley, kind of in the desert about two hours or so from San Diego. And you know, it costs like about $500 to $600 just for the event. Some people were getting VIPs that were around $1,000. You got to stay somewhere. Even though Coachella, I think you stay in tents. I'm not sure. I didn't go. I saved my money. Plus, I'm not really into that whole music festival kind of side of things. Just not, not really my cup of tea. But anyway, so it's okay to not go to those things because you are going to want to save the money. So maybe you don't go to some, you go to others. Or if your friends are going out for dinner and you don't want to go to dinner, maybe just say meet them up afterwards or meet them before or get like a smaller side dish. It's okay to not go. You know, don't feel that you're letting other people down. Let them know that, hey, I'm trying to save my money here. And oftentimes your friends might be able to accommodate them. Like, oh yeah, I totally understand. Instead, let's do this or something along those lines. Or there's tons of free things that you can do with your friends. Go for a hike or anything like that. So it's okay to not go. Number seven, and this one is huge, and that is have a plan and budget. So this, out of all of them, it could be the biggest one because if you really want to save money, you want to have a game plan for it. And I always think of budgeting as being that game plan. So when you're a teenager, your budget is going to look relatively simple. You know, you don't have a lot of complex things going on. It's not like you're paying a mortgage or rent or you likely don't have a car payment as well, utility bill or anything like that. So it's going to be pretty simple, but just getting in the habit, again, you're seeing a theme here, habit, getting in the habit of planning and budgeting will allow you to see where your money's get coming in, where your money's going, and it allows you to just add in different things to see where you can save more money. Because it was really hard for me. I didn't do this when I was a teenager. I wish I did. I started when I was like 19 or so. So I guess I kind of did when I was a teenager, but I tried to keep all my finances up in my head and I thought I was doing pretty good. But as soon as I wrote it all down and really started planning, really started budgeting, I started to see my finances in a whole different realm. And I was really able to be a lot more critical about different things. And I think I made better financial decisions when I did that. So I highly recommend just get a good look at, get an overview of your finances, see what's coming in, see what's going out. And you'll probably see some things like, oh man, I'm spending that much on food. That's not a good idea. And it may encourage you to go and like get a job or something like that so I don't know you always just want to look and make sure you're planning and make sure you're budgeting so that will wrap it up those are seven different ways that I see teenagers can save a lot of money and they can do it pretty quickly so really the ultimate thing that I want to say here is just make sure you get in habits of different things like that because the habits that you set when you are younger when you are a teenager they can follow you through the rest of your life so make sure you're doing that I hope this video was helpful I want to turn the question to you guys now are there any other ways that you can save a lot of money as a teenager and different things like that? So let me know in the comments below if you have any tips or tricks or maybe savings hacks that are great for teenagers because we all know how important saving is and I just want to know what your recommendations are for it. But that will wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb and I'll see you next time. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. So I'm going to move to the corner of your screen here. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you are going to see my most recent video. 
And if you look in the lower left hand corner, you're going to see a video that YouTube and I each think that you would like. And if you haven't yet, you can hit my face right here and subscribe. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb and I'll see you soon.